Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today we're gonna look at how to cover up a chain link fence and some of the views that are behind it. Let's get busy. So what we had over here was uh, we had this chain link fence put in a couple of years ago because we had some people coming into the yard and taking some of the fruit. And uh, we had an old horse fence that was there that was just uh, rotted out 40 years later. Um, so we had this chain link put in and we had these tall, 40 foot tall eucalyptus trees back here that were essentially a windbreak. Um, there were these historical trees. They were, all of this area was built, all of these homes were built on former uh, like lemon groves. And so those eucalyptus trees were there to break up the wind. Well, they were getting rotted out by bark beetles. And so we're, now we're left with a few things. We've left, now this fence is really obvious and then seeing straight into my neighbor's yard is really obvious also. And I'm wanting to do something with this. I'm wanting to cover it up, cover up the view a little bit. But I, I also don't entirely want to just um, block it out with something that is, you know, either those little plastic slats. I want to do something that's natural. So there are some uh, like vines that you can put up. But even more than that, I want to do something that's going to fruit. Kind of in my mind trying to get at this thing where anything that I put in, in my yard is going to be something that produces. And so we're going to walk this line and I'm going to give you a couple of ideas of what I've thought of with this. As I was researching what types of things uh, grow, what types of vining plants uh, create a lot of cover and yet are fruiting as well. And I settled on passion fruit. Turns out the passion fruit flowers um, end up turning into a really yummy fruit. Uh, I've not actually ever had passion fruit, so that's what, just what I've read. I'm willing to try it out. Um, and so I got uh, two of these Frederick uh, passion fruit. I got these, believe it or not, at Home Depot, and this was a specific cultivar that I was looking for. The other one that I'm looking for is Red Rover, and I've got the idea that these two plants are going to um, essentially be on one side of this, uh, then there's a gate over there, and then on the other side, um, over that way, I was thinking of putting the Red Rover, that way I'd know specifically which fruit was which. Um, Although I might end up just planting one on that side, one on the other. I guess these passion fruit can get out about, uh, gosh, they, I was reading like 30 feet that the vines can go. They can create a lot of cover. So that way we're gonna have some privacy and yet we're gonna have some fruit that's gonna give and it seems like it bears pretty regularly as well. There isn't a specific season from what I understand. So we're thinking that for the, for the fence. Now, you can't see them right now because the clouds are there, but we have an absolutely majestic view of the mountains. These mountains, these foothills right here, especially right now when they've got snow on them, and you can't see them because of the, the, the clouds, too bad, but the snow makes them look like, almost like we're up against the Rockies. Totally unbelievable stuff. Um, what those eucalyptus did, having those down gives us a view of the mountains, but what it also does is gives us a view of my neighbor's house, and I kind of miss being able to see green and not just seeing a bunch of layer after layer of fence and concrete. It looks almost like, uh, it's maybe a little exaggerating, but it looks like, uh, I feel like I'm in a prison or something where there's, you know, all those chain link fence. All we need is some barbed wire at the top and then we'll know we're done for. Oh, it's beaten up by the rain a little bit, but this sunflower just grew randomly in our yard. What a beautiful thing to just pop up out of nowhere. Look at how many flowers are coming off of there. Do you like what's going on in this channel? If you do, would you take a second to subscribe? Prove my friend who says, oh, people don't subscribe anymore wrong. He's not right, and I believe you're gonna prove him wrong. Hey, and if you wanna get notifications, push the bell, that'd be cool too. Bye. Uh, so we have this long berm over here. A lot of it is rocks, but a lot of it is also where the eucalyptus were, and we had them uh, grind out. The stumps aren't entirely ground out, but they're ground below, below the ground um, and covered up a little bit. And so what I'm thinking back here is a row of citrus that I can keep. Um, citrus is very full, you know, from the bottom all the way up to the top. It's got a pretty cool skirt. And so it's gonna, it's gonna go up and then I'll be able to come up and prune it at maybe 
I don't know what, 10 feet, 12 feet. So that way it's gonna be blocking out my neighbor's house. I'm not gonna be looking at it. I'm gonna see nice green over here. It'll make me feel like I can plant some of the weirder types of citrus, like, you know, maybe a Buddha hand or something like that. Um, and won't feel too bad if somebody comes by and picks it also because there'll be some of those that are a little bit more strange. Uh, it's essentially gonna act like a hedge. And so I'm thinking citrus. Put in the comments, is there some kind of citrus that you think that I had a plant in this? Um, some maybe different offshoot uh, cultivars that are out there? Um, oh boy, kids in the mud. I'm sure this won't go bad. <laughs> this is a flavor grenade pluot. Look how beautiful this is. Here's a picotum over there. Here's a cotton candy aprium. Here's this beautiful Santa Rosa plum, just absolutely brimming with flowers, so gorgeous. So we're really blessed to have this area back here. It's like a, a horse trail or what they call a bridal trail. And so it goes right, uh, here's my orchard right here in my house. And so this is, we, uh, people have horses around here and they go riding through here. So that's kind of nice to look up um, and really nice to go on walks on too. So this, people are gonna be walking through here. And so when, whatever I plant back here uh, is gonna be kind of open season for whoever wants to walk by and pick some. And maybe that's good. That's good. Come by and taste some of the citrus that I've got. I'll put a sign. Enjoy. All right, I'm gonna put those passion fruit in the ground. I just decided I'm not gonna even wait. I'm not even gonna look to get a Red Rover cultivar. If I find one later, I'll dig up the Frederick. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant these two passion fruit uh, that I have over here. And I'm gonna plant one over there about, I'm gonna, in other words, I'm gonna take the entire, I've got two plants, so I'm gonna take the entire length of the fence and I'm gonna subdivide it into thirds. So that way a third of the way down there will be one plant and a third of the way down there will be the other. The only thing I was thinking about was that that, that uh, what do you call that? That get, gate there, it, it rolls open, it rolls across this thing. And I don't know how that's gonna work with the passion fruit. So I'm thinking that I might need to be uh, careful to train the passion fruit on the other side of the, of the gate. So as those little uh, tendrils or whatever you call those little branches are coming out, I may have to do that. But that's what I'm gonna do. And I might go back to Home Depot and if they have them, buy a third Frederick and just plant it over there just to be done with it. I'm always waiting for some perfect time to plant and uh, these just need to get into the ground. So I'm gonna put them in right now. All right, so I've got my uh, vines placed roughly. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna dig holes and I'm gonna get those things in the ground. In this yard, we're so often battling against rocks because the end of our cul-de-sac is a rock quarry. But as I started digging this, I thought, what am I hitting here? And it turned out that it was a giant piece of concrete uh, that was one of the fence, holding one of the old uh, wood fence posts in place. So after I dug it out, I got that uh, Frederick planted in there. Um, I was not especially careful when I took the root ball out and it seemed to rip some of the roots away. So hopefully that thing doesn't get too stressed. And uh, I mean, stress is okay, but dead is not. Um, also, as I look down here, I don't know if you can see it, but hiding down here is a little fruit. You see it? A little passion fruit. So I'll get to try one of these sooner than later. We're gonna plant this other one. Hopefully no more concrete down here. Something I've done so that, uh, for this one, because this gate's gonna be going, coming along this rail, and I don't want it to hit this, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to train the, um, I'm trying to train this plant to go behind the fence where I can, and you see here, uh, what I'm also doing is taking these little tendrils or whatever these are and wrapping these around the chain link so that way it has something to hold on to. Kind of like, you know, if you're gonna put snap peas or something like that onto a, uh, onto a trellis, you kind of take some of their little, what are these things called? I don't even know what these are called. Hey, Cameron here again. Um, okay, so here's kind of an update on these passion fruit. 
And so I wanted to get up here and show you something. You might notice that the passion fruit here is a little bit dying, um, or at least it's very stressed. Now, there could be a couple of reasons, but and I'll tell you what I suspect. Um, there's all this other stuff that grew on top of it, but really, we're just looking here at the passion fruit. When I planted this, something that the passion fruit were a little bit different with, and I wanna warn you about this if you decide you're gonna plant a passion fruit. The root ball, um, essentially fell apart. And so left the roots really exposed and because the, the when I took it out, it's different than a tree. You wanna be really, really careful and be very ginger in how you take that, um, take that root ball out of the pot. Both of them broke apart on me. This one broke apart worse than the other one. There's one down there and that one's doing okay. We'll go take a look at it in a second. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna plant passion fruit, I just wanna give that as a warning. It's possible that the passion fruit that I got just hadn't rooted out that well, or it could be just because it's a vine, the roots are a lot more wimpy than they are on a tree, which is probably the case, but be really, really careful. Um, the second reason why I think that it's failing, possibly in this area here, is that this area, along with these dead avocados right here, this whole area right here has very silty soil and that doesn't allow any kind of drainage. And so it's also very possible that the surrounding soil just isn't absorbing at all. Um, it's just pulling up and drowning these plants. You might not know this, but most plants are, um, they're actually being overwatered. If you see that they're turning yellow and turning these things many times is because we're overwatering them. Because we think, oh, that looks like the leaves are going bad. Let me go put more water on it. And usually not the case. So um, anyway, that's what's going on with the passion fruit. Let's walk over here. And I'll take a look and show you. This one's doing a lot better. This one, when I planted it, you can see it's a lot more green. There's really no die off, a little bit down here. Um, but yeah, this one's doing a lot better than the other one. But this one you might notice is also planted, I don't know if you can tell, but it's planted more above grade than the other one. So we're benefiting from a bit more, um, here's where the, where the root goes in where the plant starts. And so you can see that there's a bit of a mound of soil. A mound of soil is helpful if you're concerned about drainage issues. Although this area right here, we haven't had drainage issues. It's more over there with those sticks that used to be called avocados. So if you're planting passion fruit, be really gentle with the root ball. Make sure you're planting in an area, like any tree that's gonna get adequate drainage um, and that you're covering with a good mulch layer to create some consistency but I wanted to give an update even at the end of this video uh, with a couple of things to consider as you plant passion fruit. Wow, I hope this episode has been helpful for you, giving you maybe a couple of ideas of what to put up against a chain link fence if you're wanting something that's gonna produce fruit. Passion fruit is probably the way to go. Um, you can do some of these others, other types of vining things that'll cover it up, but if you want it to get fruit, passion fruit seems like, at least in your, if you're in a climate that can grow it, is a way to go. Um, also, really do look forward to your suggestions for what to do up on that hill um, behind it. What type of citrus? I'm really thinking citrus is the way to go. Maybe you've got some sort of other ideas. I haven't done it yet. If you catch me quick, you might be able to influence what I end up doing. Well, appreciate you watching and whether you've got one tree in your orchard or 500, till next time, stay busy.